Welcome to our posts. Today we will see stories of r slash malicious compliance. Boss wants to cut off all employees and workers from their email access over the weekend but doesn't understand the consequences. The story starts with me and my company, I'm a 30-year-old businesswoman who works in an IT service in a bank space. I'm the girl for everything basically, but I'm a specialist for first-level support, administration and backup, sometimes even networking. Even when I'm not head of my department, I'm basically had all the responsibilities of them, but unfortunately my pay grade doesn't reflect that at all. I think of my boss of my IT department as kinda lazy if not incompetent, he even brags about getting so much money for basically doing nothing. I have a 40-hour week, but since the whole IT department is my responsibility I need to keep track of the servers and maybe problems that can occur 24-7, this is mostly done via emails. When the server status gives out a warning or a failure, I will get notified, and then I'm fixing the problem over remote desktop or going to the company itself, even in my free time. I wouldn't mind this, but I'm not getting paid for this, but on the other hand, I'm getting punished when something is going wrong. My boss's boss wasn't that much better. Since it was a fancy bank, everyone should be in a suit the whole time, to let it look professional, best with a skirt and high heels. Only problem is when you work in the first level support you need to do a lot of behind the scenes work, like slipping under the desk to do or repair cable management, doing work on the server rack and doing lots of other activities that makes you dirty. You can imagine that this worn out my business clothes really, really fast and not only that, they were so impractical and really made my work harder. So I changed my clothes to a comfy hoodie and work pants to fit the work I'm doing a bit better. When my boss saw me, he was furious, demanded I can't look like a poor hobo inside his bank. I told him that I demand work clothes for both occasions because they are expensive and gets worn out quickly. He refused, and I wasn't really happy about this. So this, so much for the introduction. Someday, my boss's boss, head of the whole company, called me. He had a plan. He wanted to create quiet hours, means he didn't want his employees working on weekends to let them rest properly. At first glance, you could say, hey, that's a nice idea. Yeah. No, he just didn't like to pay them for overwork, because he got in some legal trouble with overwork paying in general. Not only that, some employees have strict deadlines and need the extra time to get work done. To actively ensure nobody can't work over the weekend, he wanted the following, please make sure no one can access their emails and remote desktop over the weekend, no exceptions. Since we had a ticket system and be able to attach emails to tickets, I asked him to write an official work task. This has two reasons. First, I like everything documented. Second, I have a something to protect and secure myself if the task I was giving is incorrect. And it's exactly this that saved me. So I was in my office desk again, thinking how to get the task done and what implication it will have and then, it was clear to me what it meant. The email came from my boss with the task and indeed he wrote, for everyone, and no exceptions. I was thinking to myself, should I write them, the implications it would have? After thinking, I thought of how I am treated as a worker and I, decided against it. I was working immediately at this task and made an automated process to block every access to emails after Friday 6 p.m. to Monday 6 a.m. Weekend came, and it was Saturday, and I was calm relaxed because if you have not noticed by now, by cutting down everyone's emails, means of course, that I don't receive any updates on the servers. I can't possibly work on it because my remote access is also cut, of course. If you think you could forward your work email address to your private address, no I can't because we have a very strict data protection. Nothing is allowed to go out. I'm happy. It's still Saturday, middle of the day, I'm cooking myself and my husband a nice meal and my telephone rings, it's my boss's boss. He talks with a stressed voice and told me that he can't access his emails. I needed a second to process this, but I responded, that doesn't surprise me at all, since you ordered me to cut everyone's email access, without exceptions. He was angry, very angry, and told me that this obviously doesn't count for him. I told him that he specifically told me that they are no exceptions, and he stated everyone. He then argued that this wasn't how he phrased it, so I reread him his own email. After that, he was silent for a moment. He noticed his flaw in his logic. I broke the silence and asked him, Sir, if you still want access to your emails on the weekend, that's no problem. Please send me a request per email and I work on first thing on Monday. 
A bit angry again, he replied that he wants to have it done immediately, and I calmly explained to him that I can't do this, since my remote access is also blocked, like he ordered. He hanged up. Ten minutes later, he calls me again. He asks me calmly if I can fix the problem right now when he pays me for my overwork. He also wants me to be available at any time, means I should receive my emails and be able to remote work, and that this will raise my pay grade by a lot. I thought that this is the perfect opportunity. I agree to that condition and pay raise, but only when my co-workers and I finally get work clothes. He agreed. Since then my work situation drastically improved and mostly only because I maliciously complied, well aware of the consequences of the given task. Next story. You want me to make a patient stay late so you can skip work during the snow? And you refuse to stay late? Fine, now you have to stay late every day. Once upon a time I worked in a research hospital coordinating drug studies. This one's gonna go against the grain of some of the stories here. When you work in healthcare, following the written laws and rules to the letter is of the utmost importance. We run into trouble when people begin inventing their own rules and playing by them. The hardest part of my job was convincing other departments to also do their jobs, and sometimes it was like pulling teeth asking people to perform their duties at even a basic level. Ask a nurse to draw a basic 4-2 blood kit? You got an eye roll. Ask the pharmacy to stay 5 minutes past the end of the workday? Nope, they couldn't do that, they were out at 4.30. That second scenario is the important one for the purposes of this story. That department refuses to stay late. I could understand why they'd feel that way and strive to maintain as steady a schedule as possible, but in the world of sick and dying people, sometimes things came up. Mind you, I regularly had to stay an hour or two past the end of my shift to take care of problems and data entry. We could get overtime pay or flex our schedules pretty easily at least in my department. This hospital was in a very snowy metropolitan area, and one time years ago we were projected to get a massive blizzard. Every one of us the nurses, the physicians, the pharmacists, and the coordinators were essential employees, or whatever they called it before COVID popularized the term, and had to come in regardless of the weather. So every one of us should have been planning to be there the next day even if the weather was awful. We had to call in sick if we missed work for weather reasons. The afternoon before the storm was due to begin, we had a patient in clinic. Typically, patients on this particular research study got a doctor's appointment and then treatment immediately after. However, this individual had a job that made him prefer getting his clinic visit done in the afternoon and his treatment early the next morning. It was unusual, but it wasn't hard to accommodate him. While most of us had accepted our fate of driving in the snow the next morning, the investigational drug department was especially not too excited about the prospect of having to come in during the blizzard. So at 3.30 an hour before the pharmacy closes they send me a Slack message and ask us what the possibility of doing this patient's treatment today might be so they don't have to come in for it tomorrow. Really? You're asking us now? This was on your docket all day. Anyhow, I begrudgingly went to find the patient in the waiting room and ask. He wasn't thrilled, but says he'll do it if he has to. I let the pharmacy know. Then they asked me what the status of the patient was. Clinic was running behind, as usual, and we hadn't cleared the patient for treatment yet. The investigational pharmacy needed at least 20 minutes to prep the drugs needed, so they told us we had till 4 p.m. to get them the signed order. The process for getting a drug order filled involved. Getting a signed order from a doctor after a patient has been cleared to get a drug. Walking it outside across the street to the pharmacy. Handing the signed prescription to a pharmacist. Waiting for the drug. Walking it back to the patient in the first building. This was absolutely not going to happen in 12 minutes. At 4.01, pharmacy sent me a very rude Slack message indicating that I'd basically missed my window to get the patient in today and I should do a better next time, as a coordinator, you got blamed for absolutely everything even if it was the fault of a doctor who was bad at time management. Their message said something along the lines of, if you don't come up and give a pharmacist the order by 4.05, there's nothing we can do for your patient. In the future, you should get the order signed and over to us ahead of time so we can prep it. Ahead of time, in this case, meant that a patient would been prescribed a drug but wasn't yet cleared by a doctor to receive that drug. In my training, the pharmacy director told us we were never ever supposed to do this. 
It was a humongous no-no and would be grounds for a massive lawsuit if anything went wrong. You absolutely don't prep a drug unless the patient receiving it is cleared for treatment by a physician. I really like the pharmacy director, and I messaged her regularly with questions about drugs patients might be considering while on study, but she wasn't super involved in the day-to-day -day of the pharmacy workers and tended to focus on bigger picture tasks. Hence why her employees were inventing their own rules and demands. Hmm, so I'm supposed to get this patient in today, right now, eh? All right, if you insist. So I got the order signed by the physician ahead of seeing the patient, they didn't really give a crap. Next step, in the words of the person who messaged me, was to take it to a pharmacist, eh? You said I had to take it to a pharmacist by 405, right? What if, instead of walking it directly to the pharmacy, I took it directly to the pharmacy director? She was still a pharmacist and could do everything the folks in the investigational drug dispensary could do. I told her that we hadn't cleared this patient, but I had been urged by pharmacy to dispense the drug anyhow so that the patient wouldn't have to come in tomorrow for their treatment. She looked puzzled and asked if the patient rescheduled while in clinic. I told her no this was at the request of the pharmacy staff so they wouldn't have to come in during a snowstorm. I showed her the message her employee had sent me. Pharmacy director was unhappy with this and said someone would just have to stay late if this was the plan. I referred her to the Slack message that said I had missed my window because they didn't plan to stay late. Director was livid and told me that she personally was going to stay late to make sure this went through. We went to the pharmacy from her office and she intended to scold this employee, but of course everyone was gone. So the two of us went and got the drug at 435 and I got it back to the patient. I got a call from him a week later indicating that he actually preferred getting Thursday afternoon treatment instead of having it on Friday morning and wanted to keep that schedule going forward. I relayed this to the head of the pharmacy. I expressed uncertainty with how we'd handle this, and she said she'd get back with me. We all got an email a few days later saying that the investigational drug department would now be staying open until 5.30, and one person would be staying late every day, rotating every day, so that someone could cover late drug orders. But I knew she only had three pharmacists, and they were all salaried, not hourly, which meant some of them would be covering more than one late hour a week. I went to get this patient's next dose of drug a few weeks later at about 4.45. The same woman who'd asked me to break the rules was working. I asked how she was doing, and she told me she was having to work 3, 4, 35, 30 a.m. week, presumably because she tried to act unethically a few weeks prior. She handed me the pill bottle and slammed the window in my face. And to think if the pharmacists would have just shut up and done their jobs like they were supposed to when come in during one snowstorm, they'd still be able to leave at 4.30 every day. If you work in healthcare or health research, don't make your own rules, kids. I hope you guys like this video if you did make sure like, comment, share and subscribe the channel or posts.